Hi, welcome to another episode on Live on What You Grow. And we're going to try to teach you everything that you need to live on what you grow. If there is food shortages, if the power goes out, for whatever reason, I think a lot of people just want to live on what they grow. They want to live off the grid and try to be as self-sufficient as possible. That's what we're going to be doing on this channel. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about eggshell powder and how to use it in the garden, how to use it in your worm bin, and a couple of other uses. Eggshell powder is a really fantastic product that you can use absolutely free. And I think a lot of people need to know a little bit more about how to use it correctly. As you probably know, if you go on YouTube, you can see a lot of different conflicting ideas and a lot of people that really don't understand how to use them correctly. And a lot of times that they put out these videos saying that we're going to dispel the myths about using eggshells in your garden and then they give you totally wrong information. So just a little bit on my background for the last 12 years, I've been working with calcium. I was an owner of a nutritional supplement company and that was our primary focus. And every degenerative disease that is known has a lack of calcium as one of the components of those diseases. So, you know, I do know and understand how important calcium is for the human body, how important it is in plant physiology and the microbiological life that is in the soil for all of those reasons. So let's get started. Eggshell powder is just made from eggshells, of course, right? You know how simple but you do have to do a little bit of processing of these eggshells before you can feed them to your worms or you can consume them yourself. One of the problems with eggshells, and there's actually a YouTube video online, and I'll see if I can put a link to it in the description area of this site, but a man did a four year study putting eggshells into a, a little cage and then burying them into the ground. And the cage allowed the eggshells to be completely surrounded with soil and all of the biological life was able to get in there. He wanted to see if the eggshells were gonna break down. And over four years, the eggshells did not break down. You know, I was just looking at a video on eggshells and they say, well, the eggshells are going to break down quickly. They don't break down quickly. Even if you break them into small pieces, they do not break down quickly. Have you ever had a compost pile and had and had, actually had seen these eggshells in there from a year ago or two years ago? Well, I've seen it plenty of times. I know that they don't break down in the soil. You know, even if you were to break them into small pieces, they are still not going to break down in the soil. The main mechanism for the breaking down of the eggshells is going to be acid that is within the soil and the acids that bacteria and the plant exudates from the roots of the plants are also going to help to break these down. But without all of that, it's really not going to work unless they are in small particle size. Now, I showed you this on the previous video. This is just eggshells that I did in the mortar and pestle. And when you look at the particle size of these eggshells, you're going to see that they are still very large. When you put these into your worm bin, there are going to be absolutely zero benefit to your worms because in order for the worms to process it, they have to digest it. And there is no way that they are going to get eggshells that are this size inside their mouths. It's just not going to happen. I've also, on the last video, I talked to you about the eggshell powder and why that it's important for worms because worms are like birds. They do not have teeth and they do not have any other mechanism but their gizzard to break down the food particles and to grind it up so that they can digest it. And they need to have some kind of grit. 
You can use either sand. I like using the eggshell powder because sand is completely inorganic. It's not going to offer any benefit to the soil, but the eggshell powder is going to give not only calcium, but magnesium and phosphorus into the soil and to put it into the soil in a biological form. So when you grind it finer than this, and I can grind it a lot finer than this with my mortar and pestle, but I wanted to leave it this size so that you can see the size that is completely not usable by your organisms. It's not used by the worms. It's not used by the plants. This is completely worthless to your garden, and it will take hundreds of years to break this down. Some gardeners will say, well, I put the eggshells in my compost and it just breaks down really quickly because I, I don't see the eggshells there anymore. Well, what happens is that when your eggshells break down just from soil compaction and stepping on your soil in the garden beds and the, the rain and other things that are going on in your soil, it breaks down into pieces that are this size, but they get covered with dirt. They turn black because they're covered with dirt and you just can't see them anymore. They still are not being used by your soil. So as I was saying, and I want to tell you a little bit why that it, calcium is just so important. So I made this paper here that is going to show some of the eight signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia, and that is lack of calcium in your diet. Muscle cramps and spasms, osteopenia, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is where the minerals are being leached out of your bones. The calcium is being leached out of your bones because your body has become acidic. And as I was saying, that every degenerative disease that is known has calcium deficiency or hypocalcemia as a part of that problem. And what's happening is your body is becoming acidic and the acids are damaging your heart and damaging your liver and damaging your kidneys. They're interfering with metabolism. There are just so many degenerative diseases that I could name them all and calcium deficiency is going to be a part of each and every one of them. Another one is tooth decay and gum disease. When we tested people for degenerative health problems, we would use litmus paper and test the saliva to see if it was alkaline or whether it was acidic. And in 100% of the cases with people with degenerative diseases, their saliva was always acidic. So you can imagine if your saliva is always acidic, then the acids are going to be attacking your enamel on your teeth and causing tooth decay. So getting and keeping your body alkaline is one of the most important things you can do to stay healthy. Another one is numbness and tingling in your extremities, in your hands and in your feet, fatigue, abnormal heart rhythm, confusion, memory loss, PMS. Calcium is just so important for the human physiology. It is important for your garden as well. Some people will say, that this is calcium carbonate and your plants can't use calcium carbonate. And I'm glad that they say those things because it's right and it's wrong. They're correct in what they're saying. Plants can't use calcium carbonate. What's wrong about what they're saying is that they think that it is not of benefit to your soil. So what I've been saying and what this is about is to know that if you don't use your eggshells in the right way, they are worthless to your garden, to your worm bin, to you. Eggshells cannot be utilized by your plants until they're decomposed. And it takes years and even hundreds of years to decompose eggshells into usable forms if you didn't have the microbiological life within your soil. What you have in the soil is bacteria, you have fungi, you have protozoa, you have nematodes, and those are the four biological living sources that are in the soil that are going to break this down. But even then, they are not going to break it down. You may not understand about the plant physiology and how plants get nutrients from their soil and minerals from their soil, but when you stop and you think about spinach, for example, 
You say that spinach is high in iron. Why is spinach high in iron when another plant grown in that same plot of ground is not high in iron? What causes the spinach plants to uptake more iron than other plants? And the answer is the plant exudates. Plants are living things. They are intelligent. They can do things that are kind of unthinkable until you really study it and you look at it and you just see how remarkable that all of this is. It's the way that God has created plants and animals to work synergistically together, but especially with the plant and the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes. You have to have all of those in your soil. If you've got all of the right bacteria and all of the right fungi in your soil, but if you don't have the protozoa and the nematodes, then you're going to have a pretty lousy garden and your plants are not going to grow well. But it all starts with the plant exudates. What the plants do is that they secrete these substances, exudates, into the soil. These are actually chemical messengers that instruct the bacteria and the fungi to get and to acquire the exact right nutrients that are needed for that plant. So if that plant is deficient in magnesium, then those exudates are going to tell the bacteria and the fungi to go get me some magnesium. If they're deficient in calcium, they're going to tell the bacteria and the fungi, go get me some calcium. Or if they're deficient in phosphorus, they're gonna do that same thing. This is a really remarkable thing. So the fungi, actually send out their mycelium into the soil and they can extend hundreds of feet into the soil looking for exactly that right nutrient that that plant told that fungi to go and get. In exchange for the fungi going and doing that job of getting that calcium or magnesium or phosphorus or whatever it is that that plant needs, the plant gives the carbohydrates and the sugars to the bacteria and the fungi, which they need to live. Really, really remarkable things. I think you can probably hear the dog. I think that she wants to go outside or have something to eat. Well, who knows? Anyway, so now that you have the bacteria and the fungi and they have gone searching for these nutrients that the plants needed, it still cannot be taken up by the plant because it's still in a form that cannot be used. So this is where the protozoa and the nematodes come in because what the protozoa and nematodes do is that they actually consume the bacteria and the fungi and they get all of those nutrients that are in the bodies of the fungi and the bacteria and they digest it and they put it into a plant usable form. So this is really, really amazing stuff. So your plants are intelligent. They tell the bacteria and fungi exactly what nutrients they need. And the fungi and the bacteria are happy to do that because of the things that the plants are gonna supply for them, the sugars, the simple sugars. So it certainly is a symbiotic relationship. And people talk about this all the time. I want to talk about one last thing, like one more, one last thing. And I forgot what it was. Okay, I remembered what I want to talk about, and that is the composition of eggshells. People think that it's calcium, but it's actually a good form of calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus. And those are things that we all need. This is something that I ingest on a daily basis this eggshell powder that I make, but I mix it with an acidic drink. And that could be orange juice or it could be coffee or tea. When you stop and you think about all of the different forms of calcium that are on the market, you hear about calcium citrate and calcium lactate, calcium carbonate. Calcium lactate is calcium that has been activated by lactic acid. Calcium citrate has been activated by citric acid. There's another one called calcium acetate. 
And that's where that you would take the acetic acid, which is vinegar, and you can actually turn the eggshell powder into a water soluble form. But we don't want water soluble forms. We don't want those forms in our gardens because then you're forcing the calcium ions. We want the plant exudates to tell the bacteria and the fungi that they need more calcium and to convert it in that natural way. So when you look at a lot of the water soluble minerals that are out there for plants, they get leached out of the soil very, very quickly. So you really don't want the ones with the high NPK. You want the ones with very low NPKs, but yet are known to be high in those minerals. So that's just another thing that really has to be understood about the biological life of the soil. When you have chemical fertilizers, they are very high in water soluble minerals. And what does it do? It kills all of the life, the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes that are in the soil. And as I was saying, you can have all of the right bacteria, all of the right fungi, but if you don't have the protozoa and the nematodes, then you are not going to make nutrients available for your plants. So let's get to the part where I talk about how to make your eggshell powder. I've made it in mortar and pestle. I would highly recommend that you get a mortar and pestle so that you can make your own if there is no electricity. But I also use my Vitamix. I also use my Magic Bullet. It's a lot easier to do it with the Vitamix and the Nutribullet than it is with the mortar and pestle, but I enjoy doing it this way and I can grind it just as fine either way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out with an egg, of course, and you're going to crack that egg open. And of course, you're not going to be using the yolk and the white, you go and eat that. Inside the eggshells, there is a membrane. And I usually remove it. You don't have to, but I remove it because I just want pure powder. That membrane is made up of proteins and I just don't want it in my eggshell powder. So usually where the shell is broken, I would just take this and I just peel that back and I try to be careful not to break that membrane. And there you go, that's the membrane. So we wanna remove that and I'm gonna put that in my compost. It's not harmful to the compost at all, but I just don't want it in my eggshell powder. And I just do the same thing to the other side. If I try to do that and it just breaks off like that, I'll just break another part until you get to where there is some membrane, like right there. See, now you can see the membrane coming off. There's still some membrane at the bottom, so I just keep breaking the eggshell until I get all of the membrane out. There's a tiny bit there, I don't, it doesn't really matter. Pretty much got most of all of that out, so I'm happy with that. So the next thing you're gonna do is to rinse those off, and then I'm going to put them in the microwave for a minute and a half. Now, the temperature at which any harmful bacteria is killed is 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's 74 Celsius. And you want to get it up to that temperature. If you get it to that temperature for even one second, then you will kill off all of the salmonella that could possibly be present. I watched a YouTube video the other day. And they said, well, all you have to do is get it up to 108 degrees and you'll kill all of the bacteria. And that is not true. And that could be dangerous. The information that they're giving could be dangerous to people and people could die from it because of that bad information. I think that he got it mixed up with enzymes because enzymes cease to function at 108 degrees Fahrenheit. But the salmonella bacteria, you have to get it up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're going to do that in your microwave, or you can do that in your oven, or I'm going to be creating a video on how to create a solar oven. 
that you can do outside in the sun so that even if there is no electricity, obviously you could still do it over the wood stove, but if you have a solar oven, you might as well put it to use in that way. So after they are microwaved, let me just push this aside for a second, wipe that off of there. You're going to accumulate your eggshell powder. I will take, I mean, you're going to accumulate your eggshells. You're going to, you're not going to accumulate your eggshell powder. You're going to accumulate your eggshells. And I do maybe two or three eggshells in here, or I can just take this whole thing and put it into my Vitamix. Oh, by the way, here's what they look like. I do them on a plate like this and I spread them out so that the high heat will get to every area of the eggshell. You don't want to stack them into each other because then the ones in the center may not get up to a high enough heat. So I'm just going to take all of these eggshells, put them in my Vitamix. And by the way, I use my Vitamix every single day to make smoothies using vegetables and fruits from our own garden. And I think that it's a very important thing for getting nutrients very quickly into your diet. So just cover on. Not all of the particles are getting hit by the cutters, so. Let's just take a look inside. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Smells like eggs. Now that is fine. That is very fine. That stuff that's floating up. But as you can see, it is very fine, this powder. And then I take the powder and I just store it in my yogurt container. So you need to be saving up these yogurt containers. You're going to be planting in them. You're going to be storing in them. You're going to be freezing food in it. You're going to be putting dehydrated zucchinis in here. But you can't wait for summer, huh? For watching these videos. See, you know what, when you look at that, I need to go a little bit longer and that's quite, not quite as fine as I want it to be. Let me just pour that top layer back in here. This isn't a science. It's not something that has to be precise. But there's a reason why that I want to make it a little bit finer for this video. shake okay I'm not gonna open it up again you just have to take my word for it if you look in here you're gonna see this is how fine that it's going to be I just don't want to deal with that smoke. Anyway, once I pour this into here, then there's going to be a lot of residue left on the sides. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take some juice, take some frozen tomatoes that we have, some frozen peppers that we have, some frozen bananas, put it all in there, and I'm going to make my smoothie, and then whatever residue is left on the side 
of the inside of this container, I'm going to ingest that. So this is perfect for your worm bins because this will provide the grit for your worms so that they can digest all of the organic matter that I'm putting in there and break it down. But it's also providing calcium for the worms. And there are a couple of other uses for this. One is to use as a tooth powder. I grind it up extremely fine and I put it in this empty black pepper container. Take it. I do it over the compost bucket so that anything that misses the toothbrush goes into the compost. Do the shaker thing. Put that tooth powder right on there. Just brush your teeth with it. It's going to leave a little bit of grit in your mouth. I like it, actually, because I know that that calcium is going to help to neutralize any acidity in my saliva, and it can actually prevent tooth decay. Another thing that you can do is that you can use this eggshell powder. Just sprinkle it onto your sponge, and you can use that to help to clean dishes and metal. It's a very, very mild abrasive that you can use to get your pots nice and clean. So that's, I've given you a lot of information on what the eggshells do in your garden, how that they must be prepared, how they have to be broken down. When you have this very fine powder, the worms and the bacteria are able to use it right away if the plant exudates, tell the plants that they need calcium, they're going to get the calcium. If the plants don't need calcium, they're going to stay in this elemental form rather than turning into the ionic form that is going to be uptake by the plants. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.